Thank you very much. 감사합니다. <laughs> Arigatogozaimasu. <laughs> My beloved brothers and sisters, it is an honor and a privilege for me to be here in your presence, to have this opportunity to share with you the profound uh, experiences <clears throat> that I have shared with the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. I thank my elder sister, Barbara, for that gracious and kind introduction. I was wondering who she was talking about. Because <laughs> <laughs> she said my name. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I did uh, not express my deep gratitude and appreciation to our elder sister. They call her Mama, Mother June Darby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need to come and be with my family here in the United Kingdom. If I would begin to share with you the spectacular encounter and subsequent journey that has occurred in my life as a result of having met two parents, we would be here until tomorrow. <laughs> but in the time. essence of Joanna, of course, Joanna would say in the economy of time. We're going to do our very best to employ the three B's, as in black. We will be brief, be blunt, and be gone. <laughs> <laughs> that probably won't be the case, Joanna. <laughs> I'll be left behind. We do not want you to be left behind. <laughs> I think that the best place for us to begin this reflection would be to start with true parents and the call that uh, true father received from God that led to the anointing by Jesus to undertake his life's purpose, not only for himself, or which would be, and that which would be an immediate family, but also the family of humankind. It all began, as you know, in 1934 in North Korea on a high mountaintop, Mount Myodo, in the year 1934 in North Korea. At the very tender age of 16, Korean age, 15 our age, and the anointing that was placed upon his life to unite world Christianity. I'm reminded of a calling that took place about eight centuries prior to that when the Lord God called a man by the name of Francis of Assisi and told him to go and to rebuild his church which had fallen into ruins. When True Father received that call in 1934, he engaged in an intensive period of deep prayer and meditation, searching not only to discover what was that purpose, but to find out what was his real identity, just who he was. Knowing that what he was being asked to do would have lasting effects not only upon his life but the world to know that one single solitary life can change the world that in reality you and God our heavenly parent are a majority <laughs> that there is no need to be concerned about the masses of people who will either hear or receive your message or understand your divine purpose 
But to know that if God be for you, who can be against you? And so he took almost 20 years <clears throat> to not only enflesh that calling or that, that mission, that life's vocation, but he actually was determined to set into place that mission that God had given him to unite world Christianity and he formed the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. At the very center and at the very heart of that mission of that calling was to unite Christianity which tells us that without Christianity Without Christianity as that starting point, if you will, as, as the foundation for that work, it is it would be impossible for him to accomplish that God-given purpose and that mission. Which translates to today that Christianity must become the centerpiece for that restorative process of returning the world back to God's original ideal. It's important for us as unificationists, those of us who have embraced true parents, not only as the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind, but as the Lord of the second advent, to understand that in order to bring Christianity to the completed testament age, to the era of Charlie Lugok, it is absolutely necessary that we understand it. That we understand the intricacies of Christianity, that we understand what is the foundation of the, the content of Christianity so that when we go and seek to do outreach, when we seek to witness, to evangelize, we are doing it from a point or a context of knowledge, awareness, and understanding. That we know where we must bring Christianity, where we must help it to understand what is God's purpose for Christianity so that it can be awakened, it can enter into a spiritual renaissance, a, re, a spiritual rebirth. <clears throat> to know that it is not just simply enough to stay ensconced, to be comfortable, to relax in what the Jesus of 2,000 years ago accomplished, what the historical Jesus did 2,000 years ago, but also in that 2,000 year Period. What we must now prepare ourselves to embrace, to embrace the returning Lord. To understand that, to, to realize the presence of the Messiah in our midst requires that we must become that which we have yet to be, to yet to become. And so when you look at the calling of true parents and the subsequent only begotten Son of God in this completed testament age encountering his only begotten daughter. And the two growing in their spiritual awareness and striving for perfection stand as the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. Where that is now to be positioned in our world, within our history, so that not only Christianity, but using Christianity as that platform can rise to this new level of awareness and join us in this completed testament age, in this age of trouble. I think that the question needs to be asked. What brought you to true parents? Where were you in your station in life that you had your encounter with a spiritual father or mother that brought you to this moment where you embrace true parents? Because it's, it's not about a religion. It's not about a denomination. It's about a way of life. It's embracing a call to become what God originally desired us to be from the very beginning. To be 
His children, brothers and sisters, one family in God. What brought you to this place? Particularly first generation members. What brought you to true parents? What was there? What was that central component that brought you to them? And I heard, I even heard Margaret Ali say love. I heard someone, probably Joanna too, she's going to be speaking throughout the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love. This, this true love, this, this true love of of God, this this uh, this shenjin, this uh, uh, shenjong, this 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 desire, this shenjong, this this irrepressible love. love that just desires to give itself to to someone and to receive in return. Shenjong, this this passionate, overwhelming, unconditional love. That we see expressed in this movement, in reality, not just a bit concept, not just a theory, but we see it. We see it expressed in this gathering of every race, of every nation, of every tongue. You know, on Sundays in the Christian church, in the Christian church, Sunday is the most segregated hour, whether it be in the United States of America or here in the United Kingdom. Have you noticed that? Even in a even in a two thousand year old religion known as Roman Catholicism, you can see it. But what you see manifested in what we call the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, aka Unification Church, aka Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity, interchangeable titles, Barbara, <laughs> is that we see the true family of God. As God would, would desire it, as God would intend it to be. And when you think about what drew each one of us to this movement it, and to true parents, it may be nothing in particular, but it all centers on love. Love is that central ingredient. It is, it is the centerpiece. And that love allows us to look beyond race, culture, ethnicity, ethnicity ethnicity, social, economic, geopolitical backgrounds. It allows us to look to the heart of the other. I wonder how many of us who have been drawn to true parents have shared with our children what brought us here. Understand why I pose that question because for some of us, we've just simply dragged our children into this movement, into this encounter with two parents. We've never really told them what was it that brought us here. We may talk about love, but what has this love produced? Why is, has it made us faithful members? Why has it energized us and given meaning and purpose to our lives. Why do we stay? Even in the midst of persecution, misunderstanding, hatred and bitterness. Even when we see people trying to demonize our beloved true parents. To speak derogative, in a derogative fashion towards them, what makes us still cling to them? And have we shared with our children why we came, especially first generation, members, why we came. Because that's important. Because we have to pass on this love, pass on this legacy, pass on this tradition. We have to help our children, our grandchildren understand why we are here, why we love true parents, why we believe in true parents, why we have come to recognize them as the Lord of the Second Advent. Why our Theology, our unification thought is so vastly different from the traditional Christian principles of belief. So that they will have the same fire, the same energy, the same thrust in their activity, the same love that we had when we came to encounter two parents for the very first time. Our children need to know that. Huh? Satan needs to know that. Matthew needs to know that. Huh? Yes. 
Simon needs to know that. Christian needs to know that. Tioko can just think even to herself. She has to share it with her children. It's critically important that our children come to understand who true parents are. And why we set them as a standard for our living. Otherwise, they think that it's just our belief in true parents. It's just our love for true parents. It's, it's just our understanding of true parents. But they haven't yet come to really understand it because they were just dragged into this. They don't under... I, I see it in the United States over and over again. I don't know, maybe that's not happening here in the United Kingdom. But I can tell you from my own personal experience what I'm witnessing in the United States of America with a lot of the second gens and, they, and even worse with the third gens when they don't understand what drove their parents and grandparents to just abandon, to leave behind everything and follow two parents as the disciples of Jesus did some 2,000 years ago when they left behind everything, they left behind their careers, they left behind their families at times. They left, they, they abandoned uh, their, their futures because they had discovered something that was worth more than all of that combined. How do we express that, that tremendous love of true parents. And then, and, 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 and then when you, I, I want you to ask you the, the question again, what brought you to this movement? Because what brought you to true parents will be the same thing that will bring others to true parents. You've got to go and find someone just like yourself who has the same needs, the same desires, the same aspirations, the same dream, the same hope that you have, and they will receive what you have to offer to them. And they too will embrace it. When it comes to outreach, when it comes to witnessing, to really evangelizing, oftentimes we, we do it in a way that has no rhyme or reason. <laughs> we just go out there because we've got to go out there and do witnessing. We've got to go out there and do outreach. We're going to gather at 11 o'clock a.m. Was it Wednesday that I saw him? We're going to witness. But witness to what? Witness to whom? And how? Are you going to come become frustrated because you go to a Christian church and the pastor slams the door in your face? You go to a Christian home and they say, we don't want to hear any of that. All I need is Jesus. Yes, that's all they need is Jesus. But they need the new Jesus. <laughs> They, they, need the, they need the returning Jesus. <laughs> They're looking for the Messiah. They're looking for their hope. And do not realize that it is present on the face of the earth. <clears throat> so you find someone just like you. Someone who has that same passion, that same desire, that same longing. And you go after them. And particularly in the Christian church. There are a lot of Christians out there, trust me who are hopeless and feel abandoned and feel no purpose for their living. And when you share with them the joy that you have, when you share with them the, universal, the universality of, of true parents, that's what it is. It's a universality. You, you, maybe what sometimes, maybe what sometimes, I told you I'm going to speak free from my heart. That's what, maybe sometimes what you're trying to sell to others <coughs> is the wrong product. <laughs> you might have all of the, the knowledge, the skills, the, 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 the wherewithal, but you don't have the right merchandise. You're not marketing the right product. What are you marketing when you go out there to draw others to true parents? Now, I'll be very specific. Because in the light of of the world seeking to label and to define everyone and to limit everyone and, and put all of us into little boxes, little cubby holes. That's what the world has attempted to do with true parents. They've tried to knock the leaders, the, our co-founders of this great love movement and use that as a distraction in what true parents have brought about. What, what message has been brought to us by way of true parents. This whole idea of love, God's true life, God's true love, God's true lineage. Who doesn't want that? Who does not want true love? 
I quoted the song, one of Dion Warwick's songs, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing, that there's just too little love. We don't need another mountain. We don't need another ocean. We need love. And people are in search of true love. Can you articulate, can you define, can you express true love as you have learned it from true parents? There's someone out there that needs to come into a movement where you can experience true love. And then we have to ask ourselves, are we showing true love to each other? Because you cannot teach what you do not know. And you cannot lead where you do not go. Are we, are we manifestations of this true love that is the embodiment that is the heart of true parents. When they come here, do they feel that warmth? Do they feel that embrace? I, I believe they do, but, but can we do more? Can we extend it more? You have to sell love. We are a part of a worldwide movement, of a universal movement that has love as a centerpiece. Who doesn't want that? We're, in a, we're, we're, we're a part of a, of, a, of, a, of a belief system. We are part of, of a move of, of, of God, our Heavenly Parent, where we speak about the equality of all peoples and that we, have, we express it in the way uh, we gather for worship, in the way we assemble, in the way we intermarry. What other religious leader have you heard talking about interreligious and interracial marriage? I don't know of any other. I wouldn't be with a Japanese wife today if it had not been for true power. I can be honest, I would not. And first of all, I don't know if I would be interracially married. And then I have a Japanese woman, who by the way is an atypical Japanese woman, not like all the ones I know in the movement. She, she's her own woman, like Tioka Sa is her own woman. I know that already. And we would not have two beautiful, intelligent, brilliant, not dead, gorgeous, handsome, intelligent boys. We would not. I remember my, my, my eldest son, Shin Young. Shin Young, who was named by two parents. Both my sons, our sons, Shin Young and Young Pa, were named by two parents. Shin in Korean means faith, and Young means glory. So faith and glory are glorious faith. He'll be 14 years old on April the 15th. And our second son is 23 years, uh, 23 months younger, to, born 23 months to the day of his uh, elder brother, uh, young Paul. Young is glory, and Paul is the number eight uh, in Korean. The number eight is Paul, which symbolizes a new beginning. So young Paul means a new beginning of glory. So. Glorious faith and a new beginning of glory. I remember when Shin Young was only a few years old, the young girls were already knocking at the door. <laughs> Older girls knocking at the door. My wife would not have it. She would not have it then and she will not have it now. The girls were already salivating at the mouth. You know, they, they just see external, external beauty, but when they, when they see the internal form, they're going to be even more blown away. Good old sovereigns. But, uh, uh, but uh, I, I told my children they're going to have an identity crisis when they grow up. We talk about identity. They have an African-American father, a Japanese mother, and Korean names. <laughs> Somebody's going to want to try to figure that one out. That's their entree to telling the world about true parents. <coughs> Let me tell you how it all happened. In other words, that's what I'm saying. We have, to, we have to make our story that brought us to true parents the story of our children and our grandchildren. So they have that same fervor, that same energy, that same passion that we have for true parents. But, but, but what, so you, 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 what other world leader, what other messianic figure talks about the beauty of interracial and interreligious marriage. You don't experience it anywhere else. That's a selling point of this movement. A strong selling point. That's a great way to market this movement. I mean, if you need a wife, you need a husband, we'll get you set up. <laughs> we'll fix it. You can't find the right woman, can't find the right man, don't worry. We got someone who can.
good doors for you. Oh, I can, I can tell you how many of uh, my, 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 my brothers and sisters I have broken down the doors of family federation, family churches to just see if that's true. To come and see it, to come and experience it. Uh, we belong to a church that is centered on world peace. We call this the Peace Embassy. We have several churches around the world that we call Peace Embassies. The hope of all the ages is a world of true and lasting peace. That's why two parents say, the hope of all ages is a world of true and lasting peace. Who's talking about peace today? We see conflict everywhere, North, between North and South Korea, in the Middle East, between Israelis and Palestinians. We're sitting now with the presence of ISIS, Daesh, or ISIS, whatever you want to call them. The reality is, is that there's so much enmity, there's so much war, there's so much disruption, yet we have our spiritual leaders talking about building bridges of peace, of reconciliation. We talk about peace. We are peacemakers. Who doesn't want to be a peacemaker? We talk about living for the sake of others in a, in a world, in a self-centered, ego-maniacal, ego centristic community. We're talking about living for the sake of others. Who? We're talking about eradicating poverty and hunger. True parents have said there's, there, there, there are so many resources in our oceans, in our rivers that could feed the entire world and no one go hungry. We have leaders, we have spiritual leaders who are talking about eradicating hunger. Who doesn't want to hear a message about wiping out hunger? What are we selling? How are we selling true parents? How are we selling this movement? Are we just only caught up in our own traditions or our own style that we don't see the larger picture that we have become a part of a universal human family that is seeking to create the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Who do, what ministers are you here talking about that? They're waiting for the kingdom of heaven in the sky, in the sweet by and by, where they can sit in their rocking chairs and eat their rhubarb pie. That's what they're waiting for. They're, they're, they feel like you have to physically die in order to experience the kingdom of God here on earth. And two parents are saying, no, the kingdom of God is among us. Jesus and the Messiah 2,000 years ago and the Messiah today both are saying that the kingdom of God cannot be observed. The kingdom of heaven cannot be, be seen. Look over there. There it is. Or look around the corner. There it is. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It is among you. It's in your midst. That's what true parents are saying. Who you want to come and experience? Heaven on earth? They say, yeah, of course, where? Come on down to South London. Give us your To talk about true parents, about, you know, you look at the breakup of marriage. I know that some of us would want to just break up at times with our spouse, but we dare not do so. <laughs> because true parents are calling us to a higher reality of what, what true love is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone, how, how, you can't sell that. You can't back that. And then when you give that, when you give them, when you talk about, you know, I want to show you, I want you to come and experience the kingdom of heaven on earth. I want you to come and see people who live for the sake of us. I want to come, I want to come and show you where there really is the one universal family, where, where there are all races and all languages and all creeds, and where they intermarry and have beautiful, handsome, glorious, intelligent children. I want you to come and see uh, people who are dedicating their lives to purity, people who are about fidelity. I want you to come and see a place where we live for the sake of others, where we are seeking to create a land, a world, where we all can be free. And then when you bring them, they will ask the question, who is the author? Who is the leader? Who is the owner of all of this? Then you tell them. Then you 
child. In fact, you will not even have to tell them. They will ask the question. And they'll come to their own discovery. That's how I came to the discovery. With, before they even told me, even though I'd heard ruminations of certain things, I had to find out for myself. I saw it and I experienced it without anyone telling it in a way that made me have to believe it. I came to my own discovery. Because when you put together all of these components centered on love and talking about being engrafted back to Christ, being engrafted back to the true olive tree, when you talk about the power of true love, but really that that true love can only happen when there is that reconnection to God our Heavenly Parent through true lineage. Because I remember when I first came on board about 15 years ago. It's been 15 years now. Can you believe it? Only 15 years. Imagine where I'll be in another 15 years. I'll really be just... I probably would ask us, Stallings, what's more important? Love or lineage? Of course, I'm like, and I'm thinking, love. That's, that's the, no, no, no. He said, no, 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 no. It's not love. He says, it's lineage. Lineage. Because without lineage, there can be no love. Without lineage, there can be no life. And that's what the world needs to do. We need, need to be reconnected once again to God's true lineage. Because it's through that lineage that God's divine traits, attributes, and characteristics are manifested in us as we strive for perfection. So the challenge that we face in this providential moment is how do we communicate what is at the heart or at the essence of what we are about and what we have and that of which we have become a part. It's not about a man. It is not about a woman. It's about the Messiah, the Lord of the Second Advent. It's moving beyond the physical to the spiritual. To understand that true parents are God's inestimable gift to humanity that is priceless. That's what inestimable, inestimable means, priceless. I don't know if you have those commercials in the UK, but in America, we have MasterCard and Visa. They're trying to tell you about uh, taking your sons to a, to a, to a baseball game, tennis to in the UK, to a soccer game, you know, 20 pounds. Buying a hot dog or a hamburger for them, uh, 10 pounds. The, the joy of the heart in taking that son to a, a soccer game for the very first time, priceless. <laughs> you cannot even begin to put a price on that experience. And it's the same thing with two parents. We cannot even begin to put a price on the gift of God, our heavenly parents. The gift to us of two parents. The two parents of heaven, earth, and heaven. And, heaven. and we cannot even begin to appreciate enough how they have radically, at the root, changed each one of our lives for the better. Even though some of us have come kicking and screaming and hollering <laughs> at the demands of being adherents of this providential work, we have to all agree that each one of us is a better person. Each one of us is more positive. Each one of us is more giving. Each one of us is more loving. Each, more, each one of us is more understanding, more patient, more kind, more considerate, more thoughtful because of true parents. And so as we continue to, to celebrate the gift of true parents, particularly with true father having spiritual ascended and true mother still on earth, together they continue to work as one. They are the Lord of the Second Advent. You can't separate them. You can't say just because true father has spiritual ascended and true mother is left behind and true father is not here physically that things change. They do not change. They are the same because they work as one and they are still one even in heaven and on earth. They are one. They are the return of one. They are one. Let us not be misled or confused in this challenging hour, in this moment as to who is the returning Lord. 
and who continues the work of the returning Lord in this present, present providential moment. I know there's some confusion out there. I know that some of us are being but some of us are hurt, we're frustrated. Some of us don't understand, but be clear. It is the true parents who remain in that position, whether physically alive or spiritually ascended. They are one, and they continue to function as one. Well. And it will be proven that they are one. So I hope that in this moment of justice, sharing from the heart uh, what this moment is to me and what it is to you and how we grow this work, how we spread this work, how we witness to True Power Set, that we do not forget the centrality of, of Christianity, that we have a responsibility to the Christian church to bring them out of the, of the, of the cracks and crevices of darkness so they can truly see the light. And they can understand that true parents are not their enemy, but their, but their saviors. <laughs> that we can under, they can understand that true parents have come at this time not to destroy or to abolish, but to fulfill, as the first Messiah did. And that what true parents really desire for all humankind is that we come into an incredible, unbelievable relationship as one family in God. That we see each other as brothers and sisters. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., that we judge each other not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Amen. That what true parents are about is bringing out the best in the character of each one of us. And of all the 7.2 billion people of the world, that is why they are the true parents of both heaven, of, of heaven, earth, and humankind. That is why they live their lives in a selfless way. And the last thing I want to say is, you all know that true parents spent the prime best years of their lives in America, in the United States of America. And I think that I have, I have no other option but to let the world know who true parents are. And that I have no, I have a responsibility, I have a debt to pay to true parents for having given the best of their years to America because they believe that America as the elder son nation, Korea as the fatherland, Japan as the motherland, and America as the elder son nation, and Christianity as the second Israel. America has the primary responsibility for spreading this message. But since we are the descendants of the United Kingdom, since we are the offspring of the United Kingdom, I'm coming back to my parents and saying, we need you to stand with us to convert the world to the true power so that all the world will come one day to bow down to true power as the Lord as the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. Come Sunday now. I got to